Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited today because I'm going to be showing you and actually demonstrating how we can bring this scene to life. Right now it's actually pretty boring. There's actually no colors that come out. There are no post-processing effects that are applied. So what I want to achieve is something like this. I'm going to pull an image that actually shows you what I'm talking about. So if we look at the scene that I have right now, it's pretty plain, like I was saying, there's actually no color coming out. So what I want to do in this video is I want to focus on two different different processing effects. One is going to be the depth of field, which is actually going to allow us to do things like this, where the tree on the back is actually a little bit of blur. And then the stuff that are in front of the tree are actually the things that are on focus. The other thing that I want to do is I want to add color grading so that we you know, we get a little bit more of the scene and, and we have a specific color, you know, gradients that we apply to the scene to bring it to life. So what I'm going to have you do first is actually go to Window and then go to Package Manager. And the reason why I want you to do this, I want you to make sure that you have the post-processing effects installed. So go ahead and scroll down until you find post-processing. Then install the latest version if you haven't installed it. And then once that is done, then just go ahead and close out of the package manager. The next thing that I want you to do is if I if you look at the way that I set up the project is I have a scene, I have a main camera, I have my, my default directional light, and the environment. The environment has a script that I created, and it's a very simple script. All it does is basically rotates the environment. And the reason why I do this a lot is I want to make sure that people see how the environment reacts the post-processing reacts to the environment changes so when we do this we're going to be able to see you know some of the trees that were up in the front they're going to be on the back and how that is getting blur and then we'll also be able to see you know how the scene actually looks like from all angles so let's actually unplay it and then let's go into our main camera and if you had installed the post-processing post -processing effects already, you will have what I have. So you're going to click on that component and then type the word post. And then there are three things that I want you to add. So we're going to add the post-process debug. We're also going to add the post-processing layer. And we're also going to be adding the volume. So on the post-processing debug, well, we, well, before we do that, we actually need to attach the post-processing layer that we're going to be using. So we're going to click on main camera and we're, we'll look at some of these settings after. And then on the post-processing layer, I want you to do everything for now. Keep in mind that the reason why you use the layer so that you can apply post-processing effects to a specific layers in your scene. For now, I don't really mind. I, I, want, to, I want to apply it to everything in my scene. So I'm going to select everything. That's really everything that we're going to do with the layer. So I'm just going to collapse it and I'm going to expand the volume and we're going to click on is global. I want I wanted to apply this process volume to the entire scene and we're going to cre create a new profile. So I'll click on new. That's actually going to create a file. So if you go to project, it's actually going to create a post processing volume file and that file is basically what's going to hold all the effects that you add to your scene. So for instance, we need to add color grading and also depth of field. So let's actually start with depth of field. So I'm going to click on add effect and then go to unity and then depth of field. I'm also going to do the same thing one more time, but this time I'm going to do color grading. And that's basically everything to be able to add those effects. We by default, they get set to on. So that's great. The other thing that I want you to do before we start applying some of those settings, I want you to go back to the post-processing debug. And this is important though, because this is what's going to allow you to debug and, and make sure that you're applying the post-processing effects to the areas of the screen that you want to. So for instance, if I want to, you know, play with the depth of field, I'm going to click on debug overlay, depth of field. And that's actually going to add an overlay that is going to give you indications of, you know, what areas of the screen are going to be blurred out in what areas of the screen are going to be in focus. So if you look at the depth of field overlay, anything that is red is actually going to be what is in focus. Anything that, you know, degrades in the color red 
and, and goes to kind of a gray color, that's actually going to be what's not focused. So right now, if I were to apply, let's say that I apply the focus distance, and I have some settings that I normally use. So I normally use 107 on the focus distance for this game. I also add an aperture of 0.1, and then my focal length, it's going to be 101.2. The way that I got to these settings is by actually playing with the with the post-processing debug. So if you look at the screen right now, anything that is in red right now, so let me actually click away from it. Anything that is in red is going to be focus. Anything that is, you know, a little gray, it's going to be not in focus. So if I go in and actually uncheck the post-processing, you're going to see that this was a little bit lighter gray these were a little bit lighter gray and then this was red for the most part so that's the area that is in focus so if i go back to this and i go back to the focus distance you can kind of see as i change the focus distance it starts to show the things that are on the back so what i expect to see here is i expect to see this in blur which is what i'm seeing right now and then everything on the back is in focus so you can kind of click to toggle between the two so I'm going to go back and undo what I did and, and actually uncheck the debug. I go back in here and uncheck it and you can kind of see that's the other thing you can do. You actually don't need that after, you know, at one point you can actually play around with how these settings react. So you can kind of see that I, if as I move them, the trees that are in, in the front are getting blur and I'm changing the focus distance. If I wanted everything blur, then and I give it a really high number because I'm focusing on things that are really far away from the camera. So I think something like this works for this game, where let's see, right about right about there works perfect. I have the trees that are on the back blur, and then the trees that are at the front blur as well, except that one. So if I hit play. You're going to see that things start to rotate and the effect should still just work. So you're going to see that we're getting a little blur there, a little blur on some of the lights. This one is becoming more visible. The building, the trees that are up front are blur and I still have my building area in focus, which is what I wanted to. So I'm going to go back and go into game mode and not play. So that's basically what I wanted to focus there. So that's really what the depot field does. It's really, really easy to change. You can also change the way on how much you're applying some of those. So I can change the percentage here, and that also affects. But to keep in mind that it's actually affecting every different effect that is in here, but you can actually play with those to tweak it around. The other thing is you can, if you have multiple process vo uh, post-processing volumes, you can also give this a priority and then basically you can stack them all together. So I haven't really used many of those. I used the weight before, but not the priority. So let's actually collapse everything. Let's go back into the volume. And the next thing that I want to show you is the color grading. So right now the color, you know, the, the look that I have is really, it's too bright and that's really not the look that I like. And what I want to do here is I want to change the the mode and I'm going to keep it in high definition. Let's say that I have a lot of a lot of resources in my in my in my hands and I can use high definition range. So you can also use, you know, low definition range if you wanted to or high. And in the tone mapping, what I've been using is the ACES and that gives it a really really cool vibe to the game. So just by doing that, I already gave it a more of a, a you know an old school style to the game that's the style that i that i really like to aim for the other thing that i play with is, is the temperature so i really don't want to keep it regular so in in the game that i'm working on I'm, i have this set to 75 and the tint i believe i kept it around the same the post exposure i, I have actually tweak around so if you wanted to change the exposure so I think I, I set this to 0.68 before, and that gave me kind of a look and feel that I wanted. You can also play, you know, with the contrast if you wanted to. So the contrast, we can actually say, you know, I want about 
say that I want about a hundred and that's fine. Let's go back into the way here and change it back to 100 to 1 actually because I was losing some of the blur that I had on the trees. So, okay, so that's perfect. And let's go back into our volume. And so, yeah, I can change the temperature depending on the, the look that you like. I like that look, kind of gives it a, a vintage color look. You can also change the saturation if you wanted to change the saturation. We wanted more of a you know more vintage or black and white even you can do that and you can switch it and tweak it kind of like that and then the contrast I wanted to have it still around one uh, around 90 and then you can also go down to you know red green and blue and then modify some of those manually and that's really all I actually use as far as the color grading so if you notice, let me actually show you how these scenes look like without any post-processing effects. So if I go to post-processing volume and I uncheck this global, you can kind of see that it's, it's really plain and, and that might be the look that you're looking for, but if you want to give it a little more life or you want it to stand out, I think you know post-processing really adds a lot of you know a lot of depth into your game. I can also tweak the way. You can kind of see how that goes for from no, no post-processing to post-processing. So that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. So in the next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the ambient occlusion and some of the other effects that I have added in my game. If you have any questions about anything that I just mentioned, let me know through the comments and don't forget to subscribe and share this video. Thank you guys.